How many people have a passion for something that they're pretty sure would never turn into a professional career? Yeah, with a show of hands. And let me ask you another question. How many people have heard of drama therapy? Okay, not so many, and that's what I thought. My name is Fatma Al-Qadfan, and that's where my story begins. With a huge, unconventional question, and even more unconventional answers. It's a story about following my passion. Ten years ago, I graduated with honors from the American University of Kuwait, a double major in anthropology and English literature, a minor in the visual performance arts, the support of my family and friends, and absolutely no idea of what I was going to do next. Not entirely true, I mean, I had some kind of idea, and as cliched as it sounds, I wanted a job with purpose. So, I embarked on adventures that took me from Kuwait to Mississippi to Delaware and back, from training to training, from job to job. It seemed like one day I was working at a newspaper and then a museum and then a marketing firm, talking about headlines, and then the next day I'd find myself standing in a dimly lit art gallery telling the tale of an intricate emerald ring from the Mughal Empire. And that was me for four, four or five years, ping-ponging around, packing and unpacking my suitcases. My friends claimed they couldn't keep up with my phone numbers. Thankfully, though, and at some point, while I was volunteering um, at a shelter for abused children in Costa Rica, I had my moment of clarity. I want to help people. So maybe I should be a counselor, or a social worker, or a teacher. But the problem then becomes, how do I make that fit with my passion for theater? You see, I discovered theater at a young age. By high school, I knew I had a knack for it. However, even after my graduation from AUK, theater was never more than a hobby for me. That all changed in 2012. I watched a documentary by a woman, by a woman named Zaina Dekash. Zaina leads theater workshops with prisoners in Lebanon. And in the process of putting together these plays, the men get to reflect on their own stories. They seek forgiveness. They tell tales about the abuse they experienced as children. And the result is a moving production. In the process, when people came and watched this play, it started a dialogue between estranged family members. It even brought about the implementation of new laws in Lebanon. When people see Zaina's work, they're moved because these grown men are showing a whole new level of emotion. For me, I wasn't surprised. I mean, I already knew the power of theater. What shook me to the core is something entirely different. Here's a career path for me. One that I've never heard of before. But Zaina was doing it. Zaina was helping people. She was helping through theater. And that combination, the marriage of theater and psychology, actually has a name. Drama therapy. That's where my story with drama therapy began. That night, I couldn't stop reading everything about drama therapy. Because at this point, I wanted to do what Zaina was doing. And I discovered that it's actually a field well-established with people practicing all over the world. They call them drama therapists. And that this is a combination of art and science. It's based on qualitative and quantitative research. And honestly, I don't remember much else because the rest of the week was a blur. I contacted every single university that offers training in drama therapy. That was in 2012. Since then, I've completed my master's in drama therapy. 
Um, I've also led groups in five countries to date, amassing thousands of clinical hours in locations like eating disorder treatment facilities, hospitals, schools, universities. I even met Zaina Dekash, which is pretty awesome. Through all of this, though, there's been one reoccurring theme. People still don't know what I do for a living. I mean, three international governing bodies in Hong Kong, North America, the UK, a World Federation in Drama Therapy, graduate programs at prestigious universities, and now TED Talks like this one, and the most frequently asked question still is, so is that therapy for actors? No, it's not. Drama therapy is for everyone. It's basically a creative process. Using, I don't know, theater games, storytelling, mime, puppetry, whatever means to get to the end. So people, instead of just talking about their problems when they come see us, they literally step into the room, embody the problem, and bring it to life. And it looks very, very different for different people. For some people I work with, they create a fictional character that represents them at a certain point in their life. For others, they walk into my room and they have a much-needed conversation with a family member who's not even there. You want more stories about drama therapy? What it looks like? Okay. So for someone born quadriplegic or has Down syndrome, or suffering from traumatic brain injury, drama therapy might be the very first time they get to shine on stage. It's a humbling experience for us, people watching. This is Barrier Free Theater, founded by Sally Bailey in Manhattan, Kansas. Basically, therapy through performance. And the focus here with Barrier Free Theater is on ability, on growing people's strengths and forming connections. It's an unforgettable experience. This is my group on opening night. There was a lot of pride and joy in the room that night. But drama therapy looks very different in prisons. I facilitated and participated in drama therapy groups in juvenile detention and adult prisons, both here in Kuwait and in the United States. And it's a very limiting setting. We can't take props, we can't take costumes due to security reasons. Even musical instruments may not be allowed in. I wish I could show you guys photographs, but that group of people lost the right to even consent to having their picture taken. So can you imagine how freeing performance can be for somebody who's lost all their freedoms? And that's what drama therapy does, offers choice. What character do you want to play today? How loud or how quiet do you want to be? You get to choose which memories you want to explore. So like I said, despite the limitations in prison, drama therapy actually creates a space for acceptance and expression. And prison's not the only place where we struggle to find acceptance. Our schools. Kids these days, are experiencing unprecedented levels of verbal and physical aggression. So we've used drama therapy to go into the schools and work with kids of all ages to address bullying. And they're being picked on for their height, their weight, their race, glasses, braces, I mean, you name it. After a drama therapy session, however, the kids report feeling different, energized, excited. And what I notice is that for once, they're actually connected to a peer that they've alienated this entire time. They're emotionally connected. Because I'm the first adult who walks into their life, and instead of just talking at them or telling them what they're doing is wrong, I've engaged them in finding a solution. And people astound me every time they find solutions creatively. This here is a mask that was created in a drama therapy group for international students studying in the United States. We were looking at issues like homesickness through mask work. In psychobabble, we call this concretizing parts of self. And in English, basically, we used masks to explore different parts of our personality. 
The result is profound, because this group got to share intimate details with each other, form friendships, and yes, there were many tears, but also laughter. There were many hugs, and firm believers in the power of drama therapy. These women still reach out to me today. They're reflecting on their experience, and they want to know, when are we doing this again? And so you got a glimpse into my world. This is kind of what drama therapy looks like. You've seen pictures and heard stories, and I think it's time you guys tried it. You guys ready? You do not look ready. <laughs> all right, it only works if we all do it, okay? So I'm going to lead a mirroring exercise, and you're all going to be my giant mirror. So if I move my right hand up, you're going to move your left hand. Yeah, okay? So everybody is moving their left hand up super slow. Same speed as me, all the way up, all the way up, good. Oh my gosh, this is amazing. And then we're going to bring it a bit lower. And we're going to wave. This is so cool, 150 people waving back at me. Keep waving. <laughs> okay, and now high five someone next to you. Nice. Love the little laughter, a little nervous giggles. I think you guys didn't know what to expect. But a, an exercise like that, as simple as a mirroring exercise, allows us a chance to connect to each other. I basically enter the client's world when I mirror them. I use that exercise to dissolve barriers or to get family members to actually see each other for the first time. As you can see, I have immense energy for this profession. I can't wait to keep growing and expand my skill set. Currently, I work with clients of all ages. And like I said, we use this creative ther therapeutic process. So sometimes we're writing, drawing, drumming in some sessions. It really doesn't matter as long as my clients are actively engaged in their process of healing. And it keeps me engaged as well. And reflecting back, I'm so glad I took all those detours to get here. Because had it not been for that job at a museum, for that documentary that came my way, I wouldn't know drama therapy. That's basically my journey of finding my passion and following a dream. And along the way, I discovered a profession that honors humanity through theater. I hope it inspires you to go out and chase what you're passionate about. Find that thing that makes you light up and go after it with all your might. Good luck.